If the coin cell battery on your PlayStation 3 Super Slim dies, it'll lose the date and time settings. And if Sony disconnects PlayStation 3 access to their servers, no digital games for you. But hey, it's not like Sony was planning on disconnecting PlayStation 3s from access to their digital content, right? Unfortunately, there's a fix. I'm going to show you how to replace that coin cell battery on your PlayStation 3 Super Slim, and we're starting now. Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu once wrote that a journey of a thousand Chinese miles starts beneath one's feet, and the first step in this process is to remove the hard drive from your PlayStation 3 Super Slim. Slide the access door on the side of the unit to access the hard drive. Then you can remove the single Phillips screw, the blue screw, that holds the hard drive cage into the PlayStation 3. With the screw removed, just reach in, pull the lever, and you can take the entire hard drive and cage out of the unit. Next, flip the console over. You'll need to remove the rubber feet on three corners. One of them just doesn't have a screw underneath it. But under each rubber foot shown here, you'll find a screw. Use your Phillips head screwdriver to take each one of these screws out. I was able to get each one of the rubber feet out by just prying underneath it with a fingernail and gently lifting up. But be careful because you can tear the edges of the rubber feet, which won't look so nice underneath your PlayStation. There's also a fourth screw, and it's hidden underneath this warranty sticker, which is shown right here. All you need to do is peel this sticker away to access the screw underneath it. Don't worry, your PS3 is not under warranty from Sony any longer. Use a Phillips screwdriver to remove this screw from the console. The top glossy trim pieces on each side need to be removed, and I definitely recommend using a plastic spudger for this so that you don't scratch or damage the finish of either the PlayStation 3 or its trim pieces. You can just take the spudger and work your way underneath each of the trim pieces until they pry off. Just don't apply too much force and take your time because they are held in place by clips that are located on the underside of the trim pieces. I found the easiest access point for each of these trim pieces to be between the top of the console and where the trim piece meets the top access points on the console. Once you get the trim pieces removed, you'll find a screw on the back side in the back right corner and you'll also find four screws along the top ledge. One is located in the center, one's located on the far right corner of the console next to the Blu-ray disc drive warning, one is located on the left corner at the front, and there's also another one located on the left side of the Blu-ray disc warning. When you remove the hard drive, you actually also expose three different screws on that side of the PlayStation 3 Super Slim. Use that Torx tool to remove all three of those screws, one's in the top left corner and two on each side of the hard drive bay. Then open up the disc tray and remove two Torx screws that are located inside the disc tray that hold the top lid down to the center of the PlayStation 3 guts. And with all of that removed, you can just simply lift up the top lid and remove it right off of the console. Let's get the Blu-ray disc drive removed. There are actually several different ribbon cables that you need to remove. You can simply remove them from either side, either from the Blu-ray disc drive itself or from the motherboard, whichever works best for you. I found it easiest to remove most of them right from the Blu-ray drive itself. Just pull them straight out and they'll come loose. The rest of the screws from this point out are gonna be Phillips screws. There's one located right back here and you'll need to remove this screw in order to start taking out the power supply. Another screw is located back here in the back left corner. Then there's one in the front left corner over by the fan. There's one buried deep here on the bottom right corner of the fan area. Disconnect the ribbon cable for the power button from the motherboard. And one in the bottom right corner where the Blu-ray drive lives. Once you get these out, you can lift the power supply out of the system. I found it easiest just to reach from the bottom of the power supply as it faces the fan and just kind of roll it up and straight up and out. There are screws to remove that live underneath the power supply. One's located right here. There's another one on the opposite side where the power supply lives in the console. One right above the two prongs that connect the motherboard and the power supply. One directly off to the left of those same two pins. And with these removed, you can take out the motherboard and shield assemblies from the bottom case. Then take the bottom case piece off to the sink and give it a good cleaning because it's gonna be dirty. On the piece of shielding that has the heat sink that's all still attached to the motherboard, there's a tension plate with two screws on it. You'll need to remove these two screws and then remove the tension plate and make note of its orientation. The center curved area pushes downward toward the metal plate. There are four screws that hold the top and bottom pieces of the shielding together. Unscrew all four of these and then you'll be able to safely remove the bottom plate 
and get your first glimpse at the motherboard. Do make sure to clean this plate before you reinstall it later. Now flip the board over so that you can get to the heatsink side. You'll need to disconnect the leads that go from the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antennas to the motherboard right here. They pull straight up and straight off of the motherboard. You'll find a quick disconnect for the fan located just off to the side plugged into the motherboard. You can just reach in with your fingers and pull the quick disconnect out of its housing right here. Then you can lift the heat sink and the surrounding plate straight up and separate it to expose the other side of the motherboard. And you're going to find thermal paste under there that's disgusting. This stuff right here was dried up like the toothpaste that gets stuck between the cap and the tip of the tube. And congratulations, you finally made it to the battery. Let's go ahead and get this thing changed out. The battery fit may be kind of tight, so you can use a plastic sponger to get the battery out, just don't use a metal one to prevent grounding. And of course, pay attention to the orientation for the way you took the battery out. You can optionally use some Q-tips and isopropyl alcohol to clean out the housing. Then slide the new battery in in the same orientation you removed the old one. You'll need to clean the old thermal paste off of the plate on the motherboard that connects to the heatsink before you start reassembling things. If it's really dried on there, you might need to use some thermal paste softener to simplify the process. You can just leave this stuff soaking on there for a couple of minutes and it will soften it right up so you can wipe it up with a microfiber cloth and some isopropyl alcohol. And in no time at all, it'll be shining like new. Be sure to repeat this process for the heatsink side where it mates with the motherboard so that both sides of the mating surfaces are completely clean and free of contamination. And you might consider giving everything, especially that fan, a good dusting with some compressed air. And I've heard the curious dogs have a particular fondness for compressed air, especially when you spray it right at them. Yeah, okay, maybe not. To begin the reassembly process, apply a high quality grade of thermal paste to the heat plate on the motherboard. You don't have to put so much on there that you coat it like you're trying to ice a cupcake. Just make sure that you have the area completely and adequately covered. I found it easiest to take the fan side of the heat sink and plate and just lay that face down. Then take the motherboard and put that face down so that you can line everything up and just push it neatly back into place. Then you can reintroduce the bottom plate and sandwich in the motherboard between the bottom plate and the top plate with the heat sink on it. Just check carefully and make sure that you don't pinch any wires when you connect the two pieces. Cliché though it is, reassembly is the opposite of disassembly, but I'm not going to leave you hanging. Let's put this back together. Secure the two plates together by reinstalling the four screws around the perimeter. And if you thought you saw another pair of hands in here, you'd be correct because the missus joined in for the festivities for the second half. I can't say I blame her. Isn't putting things back together the more fun part of it all anyway? Reinstall the pressure plate that keeps the heat sink and the heat plate on the motherboard connected firmly. Be sure to turn the arch downward so it can apply proper tension and keep things good and tight. I found it easiest to put the plate in place, insert the screws and start tightening them down by hand, and then follow up on that by tightening them down firmly with the screwdriver. With those steps taken care of, you can put the entire motherboard, heat sink and shield assembly back into the bottom case. Be sure to check for any ribbon cables or wires to prevent pinching them and causing damage. And remember to line up those ports on the back of the motherboard with the port holes on the back of the bottom case. Now you can start screwing the motherboard assembly back down into the bottom case. Attach it back down to the case with all of the same screws that you originally took out of it. Check for fitment along the way and if you find any resistance putting the screws back in, Check to make sure that you have the motherboard assembly and the bottom case lined up correctly. To reattach the antenna leads for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, all you have to do is just put them back in the same order you took them off and push them straight down onto the posts that are on the motherboard. Remember the quick disconnect for the fan that you pulled from the motherboard? You can reattach it at this point. Just push it straight back down into its housing. At this point, you can reattach the power supply. Make sure you line those two posts that are coming off from the motherboard into the hole and slots that are on the underside of the power supply. Then you can just take the power supply and push it straight down into the housing and reconnect both ends of the wires from the power supply down to the motherboard. And on a side note, this goes a lot easier if you disconnect that wire from the side of the power supply rather than the motherboard. Now you can put the screws back in that help secure the power supply back into the bottom case. Replace the screw by the bottom right corner of the fan. 
and one by the front right corner by the power button. Then push the ribbon cable for the power button back into the slot on the motherboard. Now you can reintroduce the Blu-ray drive back into the housing. Make sure that you reconnect all of the quick disconnect wires back into the motherboard and into the Blu-ray player that you previously disconnected. They should all slide in easily and fit snugly. Check carefully to make sure you don't fray any. Now you can reintroduce the top part of the case back down into the housing. Just roll it right over the top until it fits properly in place. You may need to lift it up or down a time or two just to make sure everything fits properly. Make sure you haven't pinched anything when you roll the top case down. Now you can reintroduce and secure down the two screws inside the Blu-ray disc drive housing area. Reintroduce and secure down the screw in the top right corner of the casing. Then reintroduce and screw down each of the four screws that go along the front part of the casing. Once these are secured, flip the console over and insert the screws back into the bottom holes. Then go back behind and tighten down each of the screws individually in each of the holes to secure the top and bottom cases together. Then cover up the three holes that had rubber feet originally with them by pushing the rubber feet back into place. Then snap the front and back trim pieces back into place on top of the console, making sure that fitment is aligned properly across all seams. Then reinstall the three torque screws on the side of the console where the hard drive lives. Then reinsert the hard drive and cage back into your PlayStation 3. Secure it in place with the blue screw and then reattach that side trim piece by pushing it in place and sliding it to the side. The work's not done yet. We need to go power up your PlayStation 3 and make sure everything works correctly and that you can set the time and date and reconnect to the mothership. Since you replaced the battery, when your console powers back on, you'll have to set the time and date. With your controller plugged in by USB, press the PlayStation button on your controller. This will activate the cursor and allow you to set the time and date settings. And once you're done, you can press the X button to continue. If you want to have access to your digital content, you'll need to get back online and reconnect to the mothership in order for this to work. But your disc will work either way. Now that the battery replacement's done, let's have some fun. Check out this video here for some great things that you can do with your PlayStation 3 system.